Now, I have to ask, what does Targa have to do to take a win here against MVP? I reckon, I reckon he's going to have something very aggressive planned. I think that's going to be his plan. He's going um, to really push maybe even the Mass Zergens again. We're not entirely sure. I guess it'll depend on what, he, what kind of opening he scouts from, uh, from MVP. Mm -hmm. but, um, I do think Targa really favors aggression, so I'm sure he has something up his sleeve. I'm really excited to see if he does any more of that Mass Zergens stuff. In the bottom left corner, the man who has done two Mass Ling attacks, one well, one went great, and one went really not so great at it all. It could have like, gone great. It actually had the potential to be amazing, but it just didn't happen. Well, oh, I forgot I'm introducing a player. <laughs> the guy in the bottom left who did that Zergling aggression, uh -huh. it will be Mind Freak's Targa. And up in the top right, hailing from South Korea, with four GSL titles under his belt. That's ridiculous. Four. That's so much money. <laughs> That's so much winning. What do you? Oh, okay. Well, let's ignore the money for all right, a moment. All right, right. So he much could, winning. I mean, there are there are there are people who win the lottery who have way more impressive That's, results that monetarily. True. That's true. But he, I mean, he does win a lot, and I believe it's all due to his mind games. He he really comes out with some amazing stuff in the big games, and um, yeah, yeah. I guess he, it might be a lot harder for him in these kind of tournaments to to just do well because he doesn't have any sort of time to plan games and. Um, figure out opponents. Well, what's interesting about like the sort of mind game plays that you'll see from MVP is that they still rely on just getting good information. I still remember this amazing game that he played against Nesty, where this is back when Nesty popularized the triple expand as Zerg and defend with Roach. Can easily hold off Hellions, can easily hold off Marines. Mm. And what did MVP do when he saw this? He, MVP was already early expanding, he expanded two more times. So he was a four <laughs> base Terran versus a three base Zerg so and sick. just ran him into the ground. And now we do see MVP going for the exact same thing he did last game. The early expand before doing anything else, but ooh. Early gas. I think it would behoove Targa to maybe snatch up that gas geyser and yeah, possibly lock out some Banshee play. Absolutely. I guess it'll just be some, uh, some Hellion map control with uh, one Rax Marines pumping in the fast command center, kind of normal. Targa favoring that early gas again, so I'm guessing he's either going to be... I guess he could go for that mass Zergling thing again, mass Zergling strategy he did last game, or he could be going for a Roach. Roach timings are always good, especially on such a map so small. Yeah, I'm hoping it's going to be a Roach timing. He's I think, I think Roach is a good against MVP. Oh, yeah, he's very clearly already put a clear box around what MVP can be doing. There's one geyser. It's basically going to be Hellions, mm -hmm. and they're going to come out a little after six minutes. Yeah, absolutely. It's just the right time to start that Roach Warren, so that way right when those two Hellions come out, you just meet a mid map and go, hey, so, hey, hey why don't you go home and try to pretend that you can defend against Roach? <laughs> Exactly, and uh, it looks like MVP is going to actually see this gas scout. Or he's going to get this gas scout, which is incredibly essential for a turn. It's going to he's going to realize what the options are going to be, and he just mined 100 gas. But here comes the roach warren, so it looks like we're actually going to see a roach timing. Very excited about that. I, I would like to see speed here as well. I think that's a, a great follow up to swing with roaches, Roach reinforce with speed, speed. Absolutely, but uh, another way to do it is to invest all your gas in the roaches and then start droning again. So it's kind of like a econ destroyer, but not a killer. So uh, yeah. you'll, you'll drone really hard behind it, get a third, get all four gases and play a normal game after a lot of damage. And I think this is a brilliant play because MVP is playing a really greedy game right now and uh, he's going straight into starboard. So it looks like it's going to be Hellion Banshees with a limited amount of Marines. Oh god, this play, this play from Target works so nicely against this play. It, it could not be a better idea, I think. I think he's really chosen the right, the right uh, strategy for this. But as a follow-up, I'm seeing only uh, two queens right now from Targa. Or one queen. It's, wow, one queen? Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. This is a... Uh, wow, it looks like he's actually going to go all in off this. Off with slow zergling. Slow lane. The slow lane all in. Well, you know, this is actually probably could have, couldn't have been a better idea. This is going to... I think this could definitely just straight up win the game. I don't see how uh, MVP is going to defend against this. He's going to get a Banshee out eventually. Oh, but he's the one minute out from the Banshee right yeah, now. Exactly. The, the potential damage is going to be tremendous. 
And he can still, Target can still follow up from this because he's got a lot of drones. Oh, MVP still hasn't seen the push coming. Oh, my Still goodness. has no idea. Oh, these roaches are just going to come in out of nowhere. Oh, this is going to catch MVP completely <laughs> with his pants down. And there they are just waltzing right up. That is not good at all. And uh, Target's really going to have to focus down the SCVs and take this bunker down. Oh, no. This is as bad a possible situation as can be for MVP. And he pulls everything off the bunker. He's just going to let it go down. And right now, it's all about keeping those SCVs alive. An excellent response from MVP. He retreats as many SCVs as he can. He's going to try to conserve those until this Banshee can pop out. But with this constant reinforcement of slow lings, I mean... Yeah. It's gonna. It's really a time, uh, kind of like a countdown to Are damage stuff. Are you serious? He just rushes in. He instantly picks off oh, the cloaking. Brilliant, brilliant play. Now he just needs to get to the SCV line, deal with those Hellions, so his slowlings can have more of effect. And uh, this this Banshee's gonna probably save MVP. So I think Target's really gonna have to have an, uh, a very, very sexy you know, follow-up to this. And there we see the slow link stepping in, amazingly catching some of the Hellions off guard, but there still are six Hellions out on the field. This Banshee has six kills. Targa has 26 SC or 26 drones versus 21 SCVs. This is actually quite a bad situation being as Targa. I mean, only just now getting that speed, and there's a couple more roaches stepping into the fray. Yeah, see the damage? It wasn't as as damaging as I think he really hoped it to be. Um, MVP's economy is going to be equal, if not better, and this Banshee slash Hellions is just going to clean up anything else that comes. So it was really important to have like a really strong uh, follow-up to this, because I don't think, especially if they go for like a fast Banshee like that, you can, yeah. really, um, you can really kill. Yeah, it's like that comment you were saying earlier on about, well, if you build eight to ten roaches and then instantly start droning, I mean, I don't necessarily mind the ten slow lanes, but when it was... 20 and 30 and 40 slow links. Yeah. You just imagine all those being drones. And exactly. Then it would be and he could have a third base, multiple queens, and a macro hatchery, and all these things. And uh, wow, he sees all these Hellions coming, and he just pulls all the drones from the natural. So this is looking worse and worse for Targa now. And he really needs to get those roaches in there. And doesn't manage to save one of the queens. Does a good pick off, picking Stabilized. off one of the Hellions. Nice stabilizing move there by Targa. Still only 24 SCVs out for MVP. Up in the main base has looks like a total of four drones mining. And, uh, yeah, this is this is not looking too good for Targa right now. He really needs to, to claim a third or go for uh, for muters or something to really regain map control because these banshees are really going to keep him in his bit and his natural for a long time. Well, he goes for an infestation pit. Interesting. And and MVP still wants to go cloak Banshees, so he's just going for it, which I think is a brilliant idea, because Targa's already seen that he hasn't got cloaked with these Banshees, so he's like, okay, I don't need to worry oh, about that. a mech answer coming out of MVP. Wow. That's, that's a brilliant idea. I what an answer. Perfect, perfect decision making by MVP. And this is going to send him further and further. Wow, right yeah, I mean, if you, oh, here come the Hellions, going to try to dart up. Nope, Roach is already in position. I mean, yeah, if you've been battered down and you're stuck on two bases, no matter if you have a lot of SCVs or little SCVs, you can still maximize on four geysers quite easily as Terran. Absolutely. And as a result, Marine Marauder requires a lot of minerals. Mech requires a lot of gas. You're best equipped after that huge exchange to go gas. And likewise, your Zerg opponent, his best answer to having uh, to Mech is going to require a lot of minerals. But Zerg is locked on two bases and therefore can't get a lot of minerals. So the I really thing, like this choice. The only thing that uh, Targa is really favoring Targa is the fact that he already has Roach, uh, Roach Tech and mm -hmm. Roach Speed upgrading, which is uh, definitely one way to deal with mech. Oh. Though these Cloak Banshees alone are going to do tremendous amounts of damage. Probably more damage than Targa can actually bear to take. Um, he's, his score is out of position and he's got a low queen count. And if MVP decides so, he could just right click on that hatchery and probably kill it. No queens Gosh, gonna stop him. One shot in queens, and there it is. Uh, Picking off all the drones. I mean, MVP to think that he was on the verge of elimination a few minutes ago, now just annihilating everything with his cloak banshees. Absolutely, this is not looking good at all. This actually looks a lot like my third game of playing StarCraft II ever, where <laughs> I didn't know that banshees were a unit. And they came in, I didn't have any detection, and I lost literally almost immediately. Terrible feeling when you have quick bands in your base and you just went and see, you didn't see them coming a mile away, and it's just so difficult. 
really, really smart play by MVP to just decide to go to Cloak Banshees. And they've paid for themselves already. And we see the Roaches that try to do the big counterattack push. And now MVP joining all his forces together and just doing a direct shove at the front. And again, I love these nice little maneuvers that we're seeing out of MVP. Just building one Viking. Yeah. Knows his opponent is pretty much stuck to early layer, late hashtag. Can't deal with that anti-air at that point in time. Absolutely. And there's still no third base for Targa, so his economy is so behind right now. MVP's third just landing now, and he, is, he could not be in a better position right now. Gosh, MVP is so ridiculously good. It's way too good. And if my current uh, understanding of the results are truthful, then the loser of this series goes up against Grubby in the lower bracket, and the winner of that series will advance to the group stages as well. Grubby's been looking very, very good in PBZ uh, as of late. Not nearly at MVP's caliber in the PBT, so MVP were to win this, Grubby would be much happier about his chances there. And it looks like uh, Zergling upgrade's going for Targa. So huh. I, I think, does that mean that Targa still thinks it's going to be Marines? Marines involved in this kind of composition because He's going to be sorely mistaken when he sees nothing but Thor, Helly, and Banshee. Yeah, I mean, that's... <laughs> and I don't think Zerglings are going to really be effective against this combination at all. Unless he's going for, like, some sort of beautiful Baneling on, the, like, a massive ball of Thors or something. Yeah, I mean, weirdly, Banelings... Uh, <laughs> for any of you who spend time on forums, you'll hear things about, like, LOL, Banelings versus Thors and that sort of thing. But <laughs> surprisingly, the fact is that you don't move out with Thors unless you have a lot of them. And as a result, Banelings end up being a, a, a somewhat of a reasonable response. Mutiling Baneling is, is quite reasonable against a mech player if everything is positioned It's reasonable, properly. yeah. I think it really depends. It always depends on the position of things. Um, oh, gosh. The cloaked Banshees are just dealing so much yeah. damage. Three fungals down on a single Banshee. Yeah, this is not, this is not fungal effective at all. And, uh, yeah, the Banshees can just stop and fight Queens anyway, so... Not, not much good happening there, and it's just a matter of time until that big push happens. And I mean, it was so impressive the way that MVP just does every little thing so, oh my god, that's a <laughs> lot of Hellions. They do have that upgrade. Don't know if they have Blue Flame upgrade yet. I actually can't tell. I can yeah, 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 they, they do. do have Blue 21 Flame. 21 damage against Light. You know, I'm so used to seeing that if they have Blue Flame when they're at level 1 upgrades, or level 0 upgrades, but now they're at level 1, just trundling forward. Yeah. Four Thors to follow up. An incredible fungal man just to nab most that, of everything. Another great fungal. unbelievable fungal. He can get two more of those, but no, uh, he has no more energy. Wasted Banshees. too many on that previous engagement. The Banshees are just ruling the skies now. There's nothing to stop them. And Thor's following it up, just killing the hatchery like there's nothing. SCB's repairing everything. Auto repaired Banshees. I mean, MVP uh, played this off perfectly, Moonblade. Absolutely. Brilliant, brilliant recovery and. Uh, Follow up could not have been a better choice, and I guess that's why he's a he's a champion four times in a row. Oh, not in a row, four times overall. Thor is just ripping apart this front line of roaches. The few queens, I mean, Targa's controlling as well as any Zerg could, but it's just not going to be enough. He's got some fighting spirit. He's bringing these drones. He needs to do something. Oh, they're lining <laughs> up. He's just going to try to go for the big drone surround, but MVP, even in this extremely clearly won situation, is still controlling his units nearly perfectly. He's killed off 69 workers. And there's the good game well played. That does mean that MVP is the second player to advance that we know of. Bomber was the first one. But an extremely impressive series from Targa. Again, not quite having to follow through in game number three. Absolutely. Absolutely right. It was a really strong play, and um, I'm sure he's feeling confident against Grubby. He, uh, he's already taken out two amazing Protoss players, and um, I'm sure a third one won't be much problem at all. It looks like in uh, the number one bracket, just updating on some other results, the person who will advance onto the group stages is going to be the winner of Real versus Young Hua. That was also a round one match in that series. Looking at some of the other brackets, we see that in bracket number two, the one that we're watching right now, MVP Targa has just uh, yielded MVP as a winner, and I believe Grubby won that series. Yeah, he must have. I'll have to, I'll have to F5 that later for a look. We've had some uh, developments going on in the 
uh, group number three brackets that haven't really gotten too much coverage up here on the main stage where we have Nesty Puma, which should be a fairly exciting match. I mean, I don't know the condition Nesty's in, but Puma was looking kind of very middle of the road-ish in his series against Dark Horse this morning. Did you get the chance to see those games? I did. I actually did. And they were very close games, despite some, some big mistakes from both players. And, um, yeah, I absolutely think Nesty has what it takes to take out Puma. Quite surprised to see Sokka falling down and then being eliminated by Killer. Sokka, of course, one of the real German superstars, gets knocked down. And in group number four, the only thing that we've really gotten the chance to see is that MC got a bye. <laughs> So that does mean that in this uh, group number two situation, we should be having Targa versus Grubby coming up fairly shortly. So, um, I mean, let's go ahead and talk about that Targa versus uh, Grubby matchup. Yeah. I mean, again, Targa takes down Ace, takes down Oz. I'm especially blown away at the fact that he took down Oz. That was an amazing, amazing PvZ or in Oz. I mean, Oz managed to take down uh, Stefano 4-1 at the last MLG Arena. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think um, I think Target probably has a, like a, an advantage over people like Koreans, for example, because they don't uh -huh, see him uh -huh. play, and he has such such uh, interesting styles. Yeah. So like European players <laughs> might know him a lot more, and um, so this this game against Grubby, Grubby might have an idea of how Target plays, so this might go in a yeah. disadvantage. To I mean, it, it's kind of funny to note that there's just so much that Target did that was amazing in those games against MVP. The Zergling timing attacks did just wonderfully in a lot of circumstances, but they fell flat in others. And just a little more cleaning up, and I really think that Target would be able to just take down the best of the best consistently. Absolutely. He's very strong.